Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss financial statement consolidation where indirect control exists and the form of the control is mutual ownership. Now in the prior session we looked at two forms of ownership which is indirect ownership specifically father, son, grandson and connecting affiliation and basically in father, son, grandson Alphabet owns Google, Google owns YouTube then indirectly father, son, grandson, Alphabet consolidate YouTube because Alphabet controls YouTube through Google. We also looked at this triangular format where we have Alphabet controls Google. Then let's assume 75%. Google owns 30% of YouTube. Then, well, Alphabet has no relationship with YouTube because they cannot control, Google does not control YouTube. But let's assume Alphabet purchased 25% in YouTube. Now Alphabet controls YouTube indirectly. In this session, we're going to be looking at another form, it, which is called the mutual ownership. This exists when the two companies in a business combination hold equity interest in each other. So basically, we have company A and company B. Company A holds shares in company, company B holds shares in company A, and company A holds shares in company B. This often happens as a result of financial battles. Uh, that occur during a takeover. Basically, one company is trying to take over another company. So what they do, the company that's being taken over, they will start to buy shares in the company that's acquiring them. This is called the Pac-Man defense. It's occasionally adopted when the target company attempt to avoid the takeover by reversing role and acquiring shares of, the, of its investor. So you're trying to buy me, I will try to buy shares in your company. A case in point is Porsche. I'm sure you, you heard about this company car. Where in 2005, they tried to take over Volkswagen. So they started to buy shares into Volkswagen. So what Volkswagen did in 2008, when the financial crisis hit and less people were buying Porsche, they tried to buy Porsche shares when the stock price dropped. And by 2012, they took over the company. So this is basically um, Porsche trying to buy Volkswagen. Volkswagen ended up ended up buying Porsche. Now, the best way to discuss this is to look at the accounting and basically look at an example. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. So the first thing we want to discuss, the accounting aspect of it. Well, accounting of parent stock held by the sub. So how do we account for this? Well, let's assume we have Alphabet and Google. Alphabet is the parent company. So shares of the parent company, which is Alphabet, the, the, the parent company of Google, held by the subsidiary Google, are not to be treated outstanding in the consolidated financial statement. So when Alphabet and Google, when the parent and the sub, I use Alphabet and Google because I think it's easy for you to remember, when we consolidate, well, the shares held by Google of Alphabet, they are not outstanding. Those are eliminated, and we're going to see later in an example, they reclassify. We reclassify the cost of these purchases from a common equity that are, uh, sorry, as an investment and consider them as treasury stock. It will be a worksheet, worksheet entry. Simply put, the subsidiary does not involve parties outside the affiliated group. Simply put, if that's the case, then they're treasury stock because the sub is considered part of the parent. So simply put, what I'm trying to say is the cost of the parent company shares held by the affiliate is reported as treasury stock on the consolidated. So when they consolidate, they will take out the investment and turn it into a turn it into treasury stock. And you will see in an example. Also, dividend on the stock are considered inter-entity transfer that must be eliminated. And this should make sense because the sub paying paying to the parent, parent paying to the sub, it's inter-entity inter transfers. It should be eliminated. The best way is to look at an example. Now, this example, it's going to be a lot of data. If you want to copy down the information or if you are part of Farhat Lectures, you can download the slides and work through them. Just FYI. Adam Company purchased 60% interest in Ryan Company in January 1st, 20x0, paying $420,000 in cash. 
Okay, so Adam basically took control 60% of Ryan company. Ryan book value at that date was reported to be 600,000. That's their book value. And the fair value of the non-controlling interest is 280. Now from the fair value of the non-controlling interest, if we take, if the fair value of the non-controlling interest is 280, if we take 280 divided by four, if we take 280,000 divided by 0.4, not 4, 0.4, will tell us that the fair value of Ryan company is 700,000. That's the fair, whoops, that's the fair value of Ryan company. So any access date, any access acquisition date fair value over Ryan book is assigned to franchise to be amortized over 40 years. Do we have any access? Yes, we do. The fair value is 600,000. The book value is, the book value of Ryan company is 600. We have 100,000. What are we gonna do with this access fair value? We're gonna assign it to a franchise and amortize it over 40 years. It doesn't matter over 40, 20, 25, just to make the point. Now, subsequently on January 1st, 20X1, well, Ryan decided to buy 25% of Adam Company by paying 250,000, which is the fair value. The 250,000 represent the fair value of Adam Company. So notice Ryan went back and said, you know what? You purchase 60% of my stocks. I'm gonna go back and purchase 25% of your stock. So this is where we have a mutual ownership. No dividend was paid by either Ryan or Adam Company. And on January 1st, 20X1, Ryan book value was 800,000. So notice Ryan book value was 600,000, January 1st, 20X0. A year later, it was 800,000, which is, and 840 by the end of the year. So the 800,000 uh, is 300, I'm sorry, the 840 is 300 common stock and 540 retained earnings. Now, what else do we know? Adam book value was 1.7 million at the beginning of X1 and 1.8 million at the end of the year, of the and at the end of X1, and it, it represent 1 million in common stock and 800,000 in retained earnings. There was no enter entity transaction and no additional stocks has been sold. So the stock, you know, we did not issue any additional stocks. Each company applies the initial value method, prepared the working entries to consolidate the two companies for 20X1 and what's the net income attributable to the non-controlling interest? Well, the first thing we want to know is figure out the annual access amortization, which is I basically showed it to you. We paid 420,000 consideration transferred plus the controlling interest will give us a fair value of 700,000, which is the way I did it on the prior slide. I said, if the NCI is 40%, if I take 280 over 40 percent which which is giving will give you 700,000 or you can say well if I paid 420,000 for the 60 percent and I'm told the 280 percent represent 40 percent I know the fair value of the company is 700,000 I just want to make sure you you understand this inside out back and forth the book value was 600,000 access fair value is 100,000 we're gonna we're gonna divide this over 40 over 40 years, not 20, over 40 years. If we divide it over 40 years, if we take 100,000 divided by 40, that's gonna give us 2,500 of access amortization per year. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna accrue net income to the parent during the previous year. Well, how do we compute this? It's gonna be the accrued net income to the parent is 100,000, uh, I'm sorry, not 100,000, uh, 200,000, why, why do we know it's 200,000? It's 200,000 times, my my my, my uh, screen keeps clicking, 200,000 times 60%. Now, where did we get the 200,000 from, okay? Well, let's let's look at what we what we have in the prior, from the prior slide. We know that the book value went from 600,000 of Ryan company to 800,000 in that year. And we are told that no, we did not issue any additional common stock and we did not pay dividend. So the only difference, the only difference, the increase in book value must have been the income, which is increased retained earnings. So if we take 200,000 times 60%, that's 120,000. Then we have to deduct 60% of the 2,500, which is belongs to them, it ends up to be, we're going to increase the investment in Ryan, 118500 and we're going to credit the retained earnings, the beginning retained earnings in Adam, 118500 to accrue net income of the parent company during the prior year and update the investment. 
Now, the second thing we're going to do is we're going to eliminate the sub equity account against the investment income and to recognize the non controlling interest. Well, how much was it? It was 800,000, common stock 300, retained earnings 500. This is the beginning of the year. We're going to credit 480,000, which is 800,000 times 60%. And Ryan Company and the remaining goes to the non controlling interest. Again, this is as of 1120X1, which we had book value of 800,000. Now, by the end of the year, it was 840, but we do this entry at the beginning of the year. What we're going to do next is reclassify the cost of the parent of the cost of the parent shares as treasury stock. Remember, Ryan Company paid 250,000 to purchase 25%. Now, during consolidation, what we're going to do, we're going to take those investment and reclassified as treasury stock therefore we debit treasury stock 250 and we credit investment in ryan investment actually investment in adam not in ryan because the investment is in adam we have to reclassify it investment in adam 250 reclassifying the investment to treasury stock in the consolidation we're not done yet let's take a look at what else do we need to know we need to recognize any unamortized portion of the acquisition date over fair value well remember the franchise we started with 100,000 for the first year we deducted 25,000 uh, not 25,000 2,500 what's going to happen we have to reinstate on the consolidation process we have to put on the books the franchise and credit the investment in Ryan which is 97,500 then we have to do one more thing is we have to book this 2,500 for this year which is to record the trademark or the franchise or whatever the asset that we added as amortization expense the franchise and we are going to debit amortization expense 2500 credit franchise 2500 so next year this entry would look like 95000 95000 because we amortized again 2500 20, then this entry will appear again now we also have to compute or we're asked to compute the net income attributable to the non controlling interest well the book value starting at the beginning of x1 was 800,000 at the end of the year it was 840,000 and we are told there was no dividend we are told there's no new stocks issued what does that mean it means the only difference is net income net income of 40,000 well the NCI they own 40% it's going to be 40,000 minus the amortization 2,500 times 40% and that's going to be the share of the NCI which happens to be 15,000. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures. If you are an advanced accounting student, look at additional exercises, MCQs. That's going to help you understand this concept better. This topic is not covered on the CPA exam, but it's covered in your advanced accounting course. Study it. Learn it. Move on. Invest in yourself. Invest in your career. Good luck. And of course, stay safe.